For our third analysis, we will look at a pair of four-bar phrases from Mozart's Sonata K457. Here we are in the key of C minor. We have three flats but numerous B naturals, the leading tone. The note B natural does not exist in E flat major. Using an accidental in a major key always creates a note that is not in the key. We use accidentals in minor keys to create the leading tone and to sometimes raise the sixth scale degree. Any other accidental creates a note that is not in the key. The two phrases are almost exactly the same but are played at different pitch levels. The consequent phrase is a tonal or inexact sequence of the antecedent. We can divide each phrase into two subphrases. The first subphrase is merely an arpeggiation of a triad tripled in octaves, from the root up to the third. The tonic triad in the antecedent and the dominant triad in the consequent. The second subphrase begins with an anacrusis, staying on the same pitch in the antecedent and moving to the next pitch in the arpeggio in the consequent. The trill and the lower neighbor are embellishments. Now we must consider what the music sounds like apart from what it looks like on the page. Decipher melodic and harmonic structures. In measures three and four, and measures 7 and 8, there is only one melodic note in each measure, G and A in the antecedent, F and G in the consequent. The remaining notes, which may appear to be part of the melody in the printed music, are actually part of the chordal accompaniment. Because the remaining notes are a larger interval distant from the peak notes than the peak notes are to each other, and because they are part of the accompanying chord and are articulated in the same rhythm of the accompanying chord, they will be heard as part of the accompanying chord no matter what they look like in the printed music. When you listen to the excerpt again, I'm sure you will agree that this is what you hear. This is where an understanding of auditory perception plays into our theoretical interpretation. The work of David Huron at The Ohio State University, Al Bregman at McGill University, and many others contributes to our discipline. The antecedent ends with a half cadence, the dominant being expressed as a 7 diminished 6 5 chord. The consequent ends with an imperfect authentic cadence, 7 diminished 6 5 to 1 6. In this excerpt, the subphrases are contrasting, the antecedent being a monophonic arpeggio and the consequent being stepwise melodic motion in a heterophonic texture, beginning with an anacrusis. Despite the fact that the phrases express the same melodic idea, the difference in pitch level and the difference in harmonic movement the antecedent being tonic to dominant and the consequent being dominant to tonic, we should call these contrasting phrases.